Hey everybody, Ted Forbes here and welcome back to The Art of Photography. In this video, I wanna talk about books and I wanna talk about collecting books and what they mean to me. Books are extremely special to me because I think of all the things that I've done in my education as a photographer, books are the thing that I've learned the most from. And it's something that I carry back from my music days when I was a kid and I was learning how to play guitar and you would learn by emulating records or at the time it was cassettes and CDs of, of your heroes and people that you look up to. And so when I started getting really serious about photography, it was a really natural thing to just bring over from that and studying the work of other people, learning how to analyze that and turn that into you know, your own style and, and the things that, that excite you about that and how you can project that with your own personality. It's such a wonderful way to learn. Now, real quick, when I'm talking about books here, I am talking about mainly collections of pictures. So not really how-tos necessarily, but monographs of, of well-known photographers or well-known collections. And I have some books I wanna share with you today that we're gonna be covering on the next couple episodes here. But before we get into this, I wanna make a quick comment about this. Um, I get emails now and then from people who have watched an older episode of The Art of Photography and they have gone to find a book that I referred to or showed on Amazon and they realize that it's they're asking like $500 for it. And the reason is, is because the publishing industry, especially with art books, everything is short run and everything ends up going out of print uh, with very few exceptions. And this is, this is a hard thing to kind of deal with, especially when I have a lot of videos up there and people watch older ones. And so my advice is, is that when you run across something, if you can afford it, get it. And that's kind of what I do. If you can't afford it, then get it as soon as you can because you're probably not gonna find it months and years down the road. And that's just the way the publishing industry works. It's the way it's always worked. Even in the late 90s when bookstores were a lot more prevalent, and especially in the United States, we had borders everywhere and you had Barnes and Noble that were starting to put in brick and mortars in various cities. And you'd go in there and drink coffee and look at a big stack of books and they had just rows and rows of art books. Things have changed a lot since then. The economy was really good then and it's different now. And so just when you go to a Barnes and Noble or something, there's like half a shelf of photography books that are mainly black and white photos by dead guys or compilations of National Geographic. And so it, the selection is really kind of poor. So, you know, you can still find stuff at museums. There's amazon.com obviously, and you have used bookstores. But my point is, is that if you run across something that you think you want, it's best to get it. And if you end up not liking it or don't want it later, they do hold their value because I said they go out of print. And so this is just something that you gotta get accustomed to. Anyway, a couple things that I'm gonna show this week on the show uh, coming up um, that are, I'm really excited about. This first one is a um, published by a German publisher called Steidl, and this is the Saul Leiter Early Black and White. Now, uh, Early Color was the book that most people came to know Saul through, and Early Black and White is kind of this box set. It's a two-volume set of these early black and white images, and it's divided by volume one is interior, volume two is exterior. Um, the thing about Saul, and when we talk about this book, I'll get into it, um, Saul was an amazing photographer. Most most of the work that we know now was not known um, when he was alive and during his career because he did commercial work and this was all personal work that he shot. There are some amazing photographs in here and if you like the color work, um, I would even go out on a limb a little bit and say that the black and white work is even a little more challenging, I think, than the, and, and progressive than some of the color work. So that says a lot. Um, Saul was an amazing photographer and so I'm really interested in showing this. If this is something you guys are interested in, I'll link it below. It is getting rare and Steidl only did a short of these a lot of these publishers and authors that do these they're not doing them to make a lot of money they're doing them because they love to do them and they're interested in doing them and so a lot of times they're short run. I bought my copy at Museum of Modern Art in New York last week when I was up there. I went ahead and got it because it's been out for a little while and I didn't want to miss out. So just alert you guys, you need to start looking for it pretty soon if that's a book you're interested in because that one will not be in print uh, for too much longer, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, another couple books that I want to talk about, and I think our next show is going to be on this guy, um, Michael Kenna, who we covered fairly recently on the show. Um, it's pretty easy to find his books. He's got some big publishing deals, but again, um, uh, you know, like for instance, I really wanted a copy of the Japan book and I did not get on it and it is hard to find now. But anyway, this is a wonderful book. This is a kind of a career retrospective. It's a little different for Kenna. This is called Images of the Seventh Day. This is one that I want to dig into because it's got a lot of the earlier work in there where you see the influence of people like Bill Brandt. And I think it's very, very interesting. And, you know, Ken is an interesting guy too because he books are a huge part of his career as a photographer. I mentioned that in the Ken episode. Uh, and, you know, he oftentimes will work in these bigger 
particular projects where they're usually location-based. And he tends to kind of culminate these into volumes of books that he publishes on a body of work from said location. So anyway, Michael Ken is always a, um, a really interesting guy to look at. Another one that I'm really interested in, I interviewed Howard Greenberg um, when I was in New York last week. And Howard Greenberg is kind of one of my heroes in a lot of ways. And I was really honored to get to meet him and get to talk to him. And we talked for over an hour and I'm going to be putting a lot of that footage in t as shows that we're going to do. We'll split it up a little bit by topic. Um, Howard owns the Howard Greenberg Gallery in New York. And in terms of being a photography dealer, he is one of probably the biggest names in the world. Um, he's also known uh, as being a historian, uh, as being, you know, kind of this great champion of photography and vintage photography. He's in the Vivian Mayer movie. Um, anyway, the, uh, the book that I have here is the Howard Greenberg Collection. And I think it's interesting because Howard, because he is also a gallery dealer as well and he sells photographs um, he doesn't make a lot of noise about his own collection but anyway this book is published again by Steidel and this was from a show that was done and I can't remember where it was done you'll have to forgive me on that it was in Europe I believe maybe London I can't remember. Anyway, um, they did a show on his personal collection, and he has some amazing photographs in his collection. Um, obviously, you know, he collects prints, and that's going to be a different thing than what is reproduced in a book. But I think it's interesting as a collector to kind of get in his mind a little bit as you look through here and look at some of the wonderful photographs and see what it is that interests him. He has some amazing classic photographs, uh, you know, some well-known Henri Cartier-Bresson stuff, some Robert Frank, uh, some things that as a collector you would have in your collection, obviously, if you were on a world-class level. Uh, but he's also got some lesser-known things, and that's what really interests me about Greenberg is, is what does he find interesting about that work and what makes it so special to him. So I think that's really cool. And the last book I want to show you real quick, because we're going to do a whole thing on this as well, well, the, the exhibition that's up at Museum of Modern Art right now is uh, called Object Colon Photo. And uh, I can't stand the name, sorry, Mama. Um, but uh, it's kind of the classic uh, thing where museum exhibitions always must have a colon in the title somewhere, and they sure got one here. Anyway, this is the, um, a, a catalog that chronicles a collection of 300 photographs they bought from the Thomas Walther collection. And Thomas Walther is a, I believe he's German, he's a younger guy, he's a businessman, he has a gigantic collection of photography. And he is one of the world's um, foremost collectors. And and MoMA had a project recently where they put together a collection budget and actually purchased 300 of his massive collection of photographs for their collection. So this is a collection of photographs that will live in New York. If you live in New York, you need to go see it. In fact, I would go see it soon because the show that's up is extremely well done. Um, it's interesting to look at that collection and some of the things that are not there, which are kind of surprising, and some of the things that are included that are really interesting too. So anyway, I'm gonna do a whole show on that because I think it's really important. I think it's important for an institution to have purchased a collection like that. Anyway, the catalog is available. It's not very expensive and you get a lot of bang for your buck on this. Um, I'll link it up in the show notes. It's a massive book. Uh, it's kind of heavy to even hold here. And I don't think it was that expensive. I'm trying to remember what I paid for. It was like between 40 and $50 maybe. Don't quote me on that because I'm going to put a link below. But anyway, um, get it if you're interested in it. And definitely if you're in New York, try to go see this show. It's extremely important. One thing that's interesting about this, and this last thing I'll say on it, is in the back there's kind of an appendix here where they go through each photograph that are in the collection here. And they actually have a lot of the provenance information in here, which I find kind of interesting. Um, and this is kind of a newer thing with museums because for a long time when people collected artwork, um, there is the black market, there is a forgery market, and a lot of times they didn't really look at the provenance of where the image came from, who owned it before. Anyway, I thought that was interesting they published in the catalog because that's something that in the museum world is kind of a bigger deal nowadays uh, when you collect work is making sure that it's got the right provenance to it and that you know where it came from and that it's not a forgery or even worse case um, a stolen object which has happened in major museums um, more often than you think but anyway so there's a little bit about books now if you're interested in a book and you can't find it what do you do where do you go about getting it and I'm going to give you a little bit of a story here and some advice. So um, Tom Burrell is one of my favorite photographers. I haven't done a whole show on him yet, but I plan to, and uh, I would love to interview him one day. And he's disappeared a little bit in recent years, and his work is a little quieter. But you know, in the late 90s, early 2000s, he was kind of on the cutting edge of people who were doing pinhole and collodion and alternative process. And his first book, which is just called Tom Burrell, which is extremely rare, and it was one I should have brought it out to show you. I've shown it on the show before, uh, but it's one that was published by a record label. It was done by 
4 AD of all people. And it was a beautifully printed book. They spent a lot of money doing this and it was short run, sold out really quickly. I actually found a copy of that and it was not expensive at all. Like you'd go on Amazon or eBay and people were wanting like $800 for this. And I'm not gonna spend $800 on a book, sorry. But I ended up finding my copy at an art gallery uh, here in Dallas and it was on the shelf. It had a little bit of water damage on the front, but otherwise it was in great shape. And I ended up getting it for about $40. So, you know, a lot of times if there's a book you want, it's a matter of keeping your eyes open. And I just happened to be at that gallery one night, happened to be thumbing through their little book collection that they were had for sale. And it was actually a proof book. It was for dealers who wanted to sell prints out of it. They could use that to show customers, hey, we can get hold of these prints. So anyway, it was a sales copy, but for me and for my purposes of wanting to learn, perfect. I didn't care at all. A couple other things that you might check out are is if you have a used bookstore in your neighborhood. Half Price Books is the big chain in the United States. They're based out of, I think it's Dallas or Austin, I can't remember. Based in Texas. Uh, we have several here in town. There's a really big one and I did a show where we went over there one day. Um, that's a really good resource for used books. Um, as far as online goes, you might try Powell's, which is in Portland, Oregon. And Powell's is an excellent resource and it's kind of Amazon.com, but it's all used books and they do have everything on Online. And a lot of times they have situations in there where they can be on the lookout for something for you if there's something you really want. So it's an excellent place to do it too. Um, the other two obvious sources are Amazon because they deal with used books and then eBay as well. And I really, I mean, look there if there's something you really want, but don't get your hopes up because both those sources tend to have people who are collecting books and trying to sell them for some kind of profit. And so you're just going to pay such a higher price on either one of those two places. And it just depends on what the book is that you're looking for, how far out of print it is, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, but you know, the moral of the story is, is if you see something you want, it's best to just get it when you have that opportunity. So anyway, just just a little bit on books and collecting. Um, you know, I consider myself to collect books. I'm not a professional collector. I don't do it uh, as an investment financially or for profit. I do it as an investment for my skills as a photographer and my own enjoyment. And they're just so special to me. And it's something that when I lack inspiration or focus or you know, when I'm feeling kind of down on my own work, it's a nice way to sit down with a couple of monographs and kind of escape for an hour or two and, and, and become inspired again. So they're really important to me on that level. Anyway, once again, guys, if you've liked this episode, please remember to hit the thumbs up button and feel free to share it with your friends. And as always, subscribe to the channel so you will stay up to date on all the latest and greatest videos that we do here. And as you see, we're going to be doing these, um, a lot of stuff on these books in the upcoming episodes here in the next week or so. And so once again, guys, this has been another episode of of the Art of Photography. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Later.